Wessen T-Shirt ist das? Das ist nicht mein T-Shirt. Vielleicht ist das das T-Shirt meines Sohnes. Ja, das ist Lukes T-Shirt. Das ist sein T-Shirt. Wessen Schuhe sind auf dem Boden? Das sind nicht meine Schuhe. Das sind wahrscheinlich die Schuhe meiner Tochter. Ja, das sind Sophies Schuhe. Das sind ihre Schuhe. Wessen Räder sind das? Das sind meine Räder. Aber du bist kein Auto. Ja, eigentlich sind das die Räder meines Autos. Das sind seine Räder. Wessen Spielzeuge sind das? Das sind nicht meine Spielzeuge. Ich weiß, das sind die Spielzeuge meiner Söhne. Ja, das sind Luke's und Adams Spielzeuge. Das sind ihre Spielzeuge. Hallo, Deutschlerner! This is the first of two lessons that I plan on making about the genitive case. In this video, I will cover the basics, why it exists, when to use it, and how to form it. In the next video, I'll get into some prepositions that are used with the genitive case. If you want to take a deep dive into the genitive case and really learn everything you will ever need to know about the genitive case, you should check out my genitive case masterclass video, which is linked in the description. Before we get started with the grammar lesson, I wanted to remind anyone who is interested in traveling to Germany with me to check out the video that I posted last Friday announcing the trip. Click the link in the description for the RSVP form for the informational meeting on Friday, February 18th at 6 p.m. Central Time, or UTC minus 6. It's going to be a trip of a lifetime and you don't want to miss this opportunity. Eines Mannes? Der Frau? Des Kindes? What is going on here? Well, this is the genitive case. The genitive case at its core is used to show possession. The German genitive case is the reason that the English possessive forms use S at the end of them. When you use a proper noun in English with a possessive form, you add an apostrophe and an S to the end. For example, Bob's diner. Then when you do this in German, you just don't use an apostrophe. It's Bob's diner. Here are a few examples in context. Ich esse jeden Montag in Bob's Restaurant. I eat at Bob's restaurant every Monday. Das ist Fred's Schwester. That is Fred's sister. Der Lehrer fragt Tim's Freunde, ob sie mitkommen. The teacher asks Tim's friends if they are coming along. When you use a person's name and that name ends in an S, you can either add just an apostrophe to the end of it or add both an apostrophe and an S in English. In German, you add an apostrophe if the name ends in an S, S set, Z, or X. Although, I can't think of a name that ends in an S set. You do not add an S after those names. For example, Hans' Mutter ist im Krankenhaus. Hans' mother is in the hospital. Heinz' Bruder ist der Bürgermeister. Heinz' brother is the mayor. Das ist Max' Hemd. This is Max's shirt. Great! Now we can use people's names with possessives, but how do we do this if we don't use a person's name? Now we get into the real genitive stuff. Let's say I want to say the sentence, the man's dog bit me. As you can see in the English sentence, the man is the one that is using the apostrophe and the S. This will also be true in German, but we switch things around a bit. The man will show up after the thing that he owns, in this sentence, the dog. So this sentence looks like this in German. Der Hund des Mannes hat mich gebissen. The man's dog bit me. If this looks confusing to you, it might help to translate the sentence as the dog of the man bit me. This puts the words in the same order, but it also adds in of. You can think of the word des as of the instead of the other der words which just mean the. You probably also noticed that I added in es to the end of the word man. This is another side effect of the genitive case. If the noun in this case is masculine or neuter, you add s to the end of the noun in addition to using an article that also has an s at the end of it. If the noun only has one syllable, you add es instead of just s. For example, am Anfang des Tages hatte ich viel Energie. At the beginning of the day, I had a lot of energy. Am Ende des Monats habe ich kein Geld mehr. At the end of the month, I don't have any more money. Die Punktzahl des Spiels ist 0 zu 0. The score of the game is 0 to 0. Wait, I thought you just said that single syllable words get es at the end of it instead of just s. Why didn't Spiel get an e? Well, this is a more recent grammatical trend. Lots of people will lose the E in the genitive case in favor of just using an S. 
Duden, the go-to guide for all grammar nerds, lists both spiels and spieles as possible options for the genitive case. It does list the ES version first, which usually means that this version is the version that they prefer, but both are acceptable. Some nouns fall into a category that we label as weak nouns. These nouns require either an N or an EN at the end of them when they are not used in the nominative case. This includes the genitive case, obviously. Most of the time, these nouns will simply stick to having an N or an EN at the end of them in the genitive case, and will ignore the rules about the S's. Sometimes, however, they will use both an N and an S. For example, der Hut des Jungen ist rot. The boy's hand is red. Die Buchstaben des Namens sind H, A, N, S. The letters of the name are H, A, N, S. So to recap so far, the genitive case is used to show possession between two nouns. Des is the article that's used for masculine and neuter nouns in the genitive case. You also add an S to the end of the noun. If the noun is only one syllable, you add ES instead of just S. Certain nouns are in a category called weak nouns. These nouns require N or EN in the cases that are not nominative. Occasionally they add S to the end of the noun after the N, but most of the time they just add an N and not the S. Now for the feminine and plural nouns. They are much easier. The articles in front of these feminine or plural nouns in the genitive case all end with R. There are no letters to be added to the end of the noun, so all you have to do is make sure that your article has an R at the end of it and you are done and good to go. For example, Das Kleid der Frau ist blau. The woman's dress is blue. Warum liegen die Spielzeuge der Kinder auf dem Boden? Why are the children's toys on the floor? So far, all of my examples have used definite articles, or words meaning the. Obviously, you can also use indefinite articles, or words meaning a or an. The last letters are the same, and the rules for adding s and es are the same as well. For example, das ist das Hemd eines Mannes. This is a man's shirt. Ich habe einen Knochen eines Dinosauriers hinter meinem Haus entdeckt. I discovered a dinosaur's bone behind my house. Die Haare einer Frau sind meistens länger als die Haare eines Mannes. The hair of a woman is usually longer than the hair of a man. Der Bürgermeister einer Stadt leitet die Gemeinde. The mayor of a city leads the community. Die Hufe eines Pferdes sind von Hufeisen geschützt. The hooves of a horse are protected by horseshoes. Die beste Freundin eines Mädchens sollte ihre Mutter sein. A girl's best friend should be her mother. Die Sohlen deiner Schuhe sind kaputt. The soles of your shoes are broken. Ich kaufe den Lehrern meiner Kinder etwas zur Wertschätzung. I buy my children's teachers something for appreciation. As you may have noticed in the last two examples, possessive adjectives like mine and dein use the same endings and follow the same patterns as the indefinite articles do. This is sometimes confusing to German learners because there is a possessive adjective that is also showing possession in a secondary way by using the genitive case. The possessive adjective shows to whom the noun that follows belongs. The genitive case shows that this noun also possesses something else, namely the object that preceded it. Just for good measure, here are a few more examples of that. Die Mutter seines Vaters ist seine Großmutter. The mother of his father is his grandmother. Der Vater ihrer Mutter ist ihr Großvater. Her mother's father is her grandfather. Die Kleidung unseres Kindes sind immer auf dem Boden. Our child's clothes are always on the floor. Habt ihr die Schlüssel eurer Eltern gesehen? Have you seen your parents' keys? In addition to using a possessive adjective with the genitive case, you can also make a genitive chain. This isn't as common in spoken German, but you might come across it in something that you read. For example, Die Autos der Mitarbeiter des Geschäfts dürfen in der östlichen Ecke des Parkplatzes der nördlichen Seite des Gebäudes geparkt werden. The cars of the employees of the company can be parked in the eastern corner of the parking lot of the north side of the building. This is obviously a stretch of how this can be used, but it's something that you should be aware of in case you come across it. The last bit we want to talk about today is something that I mentioned in the opening of this video. The word wessen is used for the genitive question word. In English, we say whose, not whose as in W-H-O apostrophe S, but whose, W-H-O-S-E. There is a huge difference, and if you are struggling with the difference here, the one with the apostrophe means who is, while the other one we are concerned with is asking about the ownership of something. This is the last of a series of four question words that we have had about people. 
In the nominative case, we used wer, which translates as who. Wer hat diese Schuhe? Who has these shoes? In the accusative case, we use the question word wen, which is the first whom in German and is used for direct objects and objects of accusative prepositions. Für wen sind diese Schuhe? For whom are these shoes? In the dative case, we use the question word wem, which is used as a secondary whom in German, and it's used for indirect objects, objects of dative verbs, and objects of dative prepositions. Wen gehören diese Schuhe? To whom do these shoes belong? In the genitive case, we use the question word wessen, which translates as whose, and is used to inquire about the owner or possessor of the object that follows. Wessen Schuhe sind das? Whose shoes are these? Now to end this video, I'd like to give some examples like I did at the beginning of this video, which show a series of example sentences all connected to each other, using the genitive case and other ways to show possession next to each other. These examples, however, will have a bit more variety to them instead of the pattern that was followed in the initial examples. Wessen Bruder kaufst du ein Geschenk? Ich kaufe dem Bruder meiner Freundin ein Geschenk. Er hat morgen seinen Geburtstag. Das Geschenk ihres Bruders muss nicht teuer sein, aber es sollte cool sein. Wessen Katze ist in diesem Bild? Das ist die Katze seines Nachbarn. Die Katze des Nachbarn ist schon längst tot. Das Fell dieser Katze war sehr weich. Ich vermisse seine Katze. Wessen Blumen sind das? Das sind die Blumen unserer Ärzte. Sie haben sie letztes Jahr gepflanzt. Ich finde die Blumen unserer Ärzte so schön, dass ich sie fotografieren musste. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to take a deeper dive into the genitive case, click over here for my genitive case masterclass. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!